South Korea's development of indigenous aerospace capabilities showcases its strategic needs and technological expertise. Beginning in the 1990s, this effort was fueled by South Korea's advancing technological industry, the threat from North Korea, and the desire to reduce reliance on U.S. defense supplies. A key achievement in this journey was the creation of the T-50 jet fighter. Completed by 2002, the T-50 became a crucial asset for the South Korean Air Force. By 2011, its popularity among South Korean fighter pilots led to the government funding a combat variant of the T-50, known as the F-A-50 Fighting Eagle. In this video, we are taking a closer look at the T-50 platform, South Korea's first indigenous supersonic aircraft and one of the world's few supersonic trainers. Let's dive in. The T-50 platform is a family of South Korean supersonic advanced jet trainers and light combat aircraft developed by Korea Aerospace Industries with assistance from Lockheed Martin. The F-A-50, a lightweight combat version of the original trainer variant, has become highly successful in the export market. Experts highlight that the F-A-50 is a multi-role fighter comparable to the US-made F-16 in air capabilities, but at half the price and with lower maintenance requirements. The development of the T-50 platform dates back to 1992. By 1999, the South Korean defense sector was completely reorganized, merging the aerospace divisions of Hyundai, Daewoo, and Samsung to create Korea Aerospace Industries, which paved the way for T-50 production to start. The South Korean government always intended the T-50 to serve as a jet trainer system, allowing Air Force pilots to train on the indigenously built aircraft to operate other warplanes in South Korea's fleet. The development of the T-50 was a collaborative effort. Although South Korea's defense industry began shifting from reliance on American defense contractors, KAI still partnered with American companies. For instance, in the 1980s, the U.S. assisted South Korea to build its own variant of the F-16, the KF-16, with all parts sourced domestically. The T-50 was the next logical step, developing an entirely unique fighter system. Once completed by 2002, the T-50 became a crucial component of the South Korean Air Force. By 2011, its popularity among pilots led to the government funding a combat variant of the T-50, known as the F-A-50 Fighting Eagle. Both the T-50 and F-A-50 have enjoyed immense popularity as export systems. Currently, the T-50 platform is operated by seven countries, including South Korea, Indonesia, the Philippines, Iraq, Thailand, Poland, and Malaysia. The T-50 design is basically an altered version of the Lockheed Martin F-16 Fighting Falcon, but scaled down to 80% of its size. It features a spacious glass canopy accommodating tandem-seated pilots, a large area vertical tail fin, and a single turbofan power plant from the General Electric F-404 series, produced under license by Samsung Techwin, now known as Hanwha Vision. The engine comprises three staged fans, a seven axial stage arrangement, and an afterburner, allowing the aircraft to reach a maximum speed of Mach 1.5, with a thrust output of up to 78 kilonewtons with afterburner engaged. The altitude ceiling of the T-50 is 14,600 meters, and its airframe is engineered for 8,000 hours of service. Internal fuel tanks, totaling 2,655 liters, are distributed across the fuselage and wings, supplemented by an additional 1,700 liters from three external fuel tanks. Trainer variants of the T-50 feature a paint scheme of white and red, while aerobatic versions feature white, black, and yellow accents. Avionics for the T-50 are primarily provided by Lockheed Martin, including the fly-by-wire system, while Samsung Thales and LIG Nex-1 are the main developers of avionics and electronic warfare equipment. 
The FA-50 light combat variant is also outfitted with an Elta ELM-2032 fire control radar. In terms of armament, the FA-50 houses a three-barrel cannon based on the M61 Vulcan internally behind the cockpit, along with wingtip rails capable of accommodating AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. Various underwing hardpoints can carry additional weaponry, such as AGM-65 Maverick missiles, Hydra-70, Logir rocket launchers, cluster bombs, and general-purpose bombs. Externally, the FA-50 can also be fitted with Raphael's Sky Shield and Condor II reconnaissance pods to enhance its electronic warfare, reconnaissance, and targeting capabilities. Other armaments include SPICE multifunctional guidance kits, JDAM for air-to-ground operations, and AM-120 missiles for beyond visual range air-to-air -air engagements. The South Korean military is considering equipping the FA-50 with a smaller version of the Taurus KEP-D-350 missile, extending its standoff engagement capability to 400 kilometers. It's evident that the T-50 is a highly capable platform with a one notable advantage, cost effectiveness. The most recent contract with Malaysia in 2023 revealed that the FA-50 has an estimated unit cost of $43.5 million. To put this into perspective, the basic cost of an F-16 is approximately $70 million, making the FA-50 nearly half the price. While the T-50 maintains ties with the American defense supply chain, its development marks a significant step in Seoul's effort to strengthen its indigenous defense capabilities. Moving from the KF-16 to the T-50, we see clear progress, reflecting South Korea's commitment to building its defense industry domestically. This commitment has not only brought about the T-50, but also its light combat version, which has seen remarkable success in export markets. Even more importantly, it has paved the way for their latest fighter aircraft program, the KF-21 Boramai, showing the substantial investments made by South Korea in enhancing its national defense. So, what do you think? Let's discuss in the comments below. And if you found this video informative, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.